Finally, we've reached the last few pieces of our mud racing project. This has been an incredible build and it's really opened my eyes to just how big the mud racing community is and how much of a following it has. But before I can truly say that we're done, there's some important finishing touches that are gonna add safety, increase drivability, and make the comfort level of the Project Mud Racer way, way better. And to start it all off, I'm gonna ditch the stock handlebars, removing the controls and switch gear, and tossing them right in the trash. While adding an adjustable riser and a set of taper bars are gonna add a huge level of comfort and drivability, my friends at Checo Racing make a steering stem strengthener that's gonna ensure that your steering stem doesn't bend or break. This beautifully made 6061 billet aluminum brace is designed for all Gen 1 can amps. It takes roughly 20 to 30 minutes to install and makes your stock steering stem 100% stronger. It allows for multiple bar location setups, rises the bar 13 mil, and will work with your stock or aftermarket bar designs. Know that if your Outlander or Rennie does have the power steering feature, you're gonna need to bore the upper top plate hole to 28 mil from the stock 25 millimeters. The brace is designed to strengthen the hollow stock stem that can fail under hard steering loads, especially when utilizing four-wheel drive in harsh conditions with oversized tires and increased horsepower. And for us, that's a hat trick of reasons we went with the Checo Racing stem. As I said earlier, we're throwing away the stock bars and that's because I prefer a tapered design that puts the bars right in the sweet spot for stand up or sit down riding. And this is especially true when you're racing. And when it comes to tapered bar designs and risers, rocks are the folks that you need to talk to. They make risers and bar setups for just about everything that has handlebars. So getting a fully adjustable, two inch pivoting aluminum riser linked to a set of their high bend taper bars was super easy to spec right off their website. The riser carries a lifetime warranty, are made in the USA and accept either a 7 8 or 1 and 1 8 bar. Now I like fat bars or 1 and 1 8 inch diameter tube, and these high bend bars have a 2.45 sweep with a 3.74 inch overall height. At the controls, the bars are 7 8 so everything fits back on, and all you need is a new set of grips to make your setup complete. Okay, well, maybe one or two more things. Keeping mud off your hands when mud racing can seem like a bit of a strange concept, but the truth is when your hands get greasy, it's hard to hold on to a rig like this. And that's another area that Rock's speed effects can help out. While they offer solid plastic guards, they also offer totally custom flex tech guards that are material on the outside with a flexible core that'll bend and flex, but not break like most others. With over 2,100 custom choices or 11 standard colors, you can custom build your guards to suit your style or just buy a stock set. I'm installing them with aluminum Flextex mounts made out of 6061 aluminum and secured with a double bolt solid clamping design that's sure to stay put, keeping the mud off my hands and me in control. Oh, they look killer too and will match the finished wrap because these are custom. To finish it off at the bars, a waterproof rubberized fabric rocks bar pad cleans up the mounts and will add a bit of safety should things get a little out of control. While I'm talking about safety, I've never mud raced before, but looking at the footwell area, I thought there must be a better way than just to put a massive foot peg right down here and leave your legs open to the abuse of what's gonna come at you. Also, I didn't wanna put back on those huge, massive plastic stock footwells that just look like a sea of plastic. Full Throttle Power Sports in Manitoba, Canada had my answer with their CNC laser cut and formed 10 gauge steel race series footwells. They offer a Bushwhacker series without the reliefs, but for racing, these are the hot ticket, offering ample clear out and drain in all situations. Plus, because there's no welds or seams, they are super strong, and with the black powder coated finish, they're durable and good looking. It's important to note that they also add a huge level of safety protection as the 29.5 Assassinators can throw some serious junk back at the welds. And stock plastic is about as safe as a tissue in a hurricane. With these, we know our legs are safe from intrusion, and when I mount up the Rock's oversized 8-inch long by 3-inch wide utility foot pegs, we may not have much left at the bottom of our boots, but we aren't going anywhere, and keeping good traction even when it gets a little rough will not be an issue. Now that the mud racing build is finished from a performance standpoint, I'm excited to send it off to graphics and then get it out in the mud. We're only a few short weeks away from the full racing story where we're going to go for broke and put the mud racer to the true test. This segment is just the start for you. Click the subscribe button and become part of the Dirt Tracks Nation where you'll have access to tons of great content from all of the years past of our great stories, trail techs, and test rides.